The web is basically a huge grab bag of stuff that other people are giving away. So just like you might hesitate before taking something a stranger offers you on the street, before you take information from the web, be sure to ask who's giving this away and why. For example, here's a great source for statistics that is available free on the web. This is the Statistical Abstract of the United States. So why is this good stuff free on the web? Well, one perfectly good reason to put information on the web for free is that sharing information may simply be part of the agency's mission. In the case of government agencies, they may even be legally required to inform the public of the results of their studies and research because the work was paid for with tax dollars. Here's another example of some good information. Uh, this one is coming to us from a .org site. So this is about the eco-regions here in Oregon. And like government agencies, organizations are likely to give their information away because it's probably part of their mission to get their message out to the public. With organizations, it's important to find out just what their mission is. Organizations certainly want to inform the public about their cause, but they also often want to persuade us of something. So you should be alert to bias to the information that they provide. Now this organization has actually done a good job of telling us about themselves. We can look at the Who We Are section of this organization's website to see that their mission is nature conservation. They've also provided the qualifications of their experts and their board members. This organization has lots of highly qualified people on their staff and board, and that raises our confidence in the information that they're providing. But here's a good example of how important it is to find out more about the organization. This is martinlutherking.org. So at first glance, most people would probably assume that this is a civil rights organization or a historical society or something of that nature. But if we click the hosted by link down at the bottom, we find that this information is coming to us from a white supremacist organization and its actual intent is to defame Martin Luther King. And just as an aside, note that not all nonprofit organizations actually have a .org domain. Some have a .com. So, for example, this is Islamic Art and Architecture. It's a, organiz it's a nonprofit organization, but they're using a .com domain. But most .com sites are going to be from commercial businesses. So why are these free? Well, businesses may be keeping us informed and telling us about themselves, or they may just be trying to sell us something. Commercial interest would certainly be a potential source of bias to watch for as you evaluate information. Magazines such as Time may offer the full text of articles on their dot-com websites, and that's kind of a nice deal. We get reasonably credible information by professional reporters, but in return, they're selling our eyeballs to their advertisers. Now some dot-com sites, in addition to the business sites, are personal web pages. So, and pages with a dot-net domain, which means a page from an internet service provider, those are usually also personal pages. And personal pages by interested amateurs may, have, may actually have pretty good information. And if they're done well, they'll point you to the reliable sources that they used, and then you can go consult those. Experts may also put information on their personal pages, and this is an example of that. This is badastronomy.com, and it's the website of an astronomer named Phil Plate, and he uses this website to discuss astronomical fact and fiction, especially as portrayed in the media. And he provides his bio with a Who Am I link from his website. So this is information written by an expert for the general public. It'd be a lot like a popular book. So its purpose is basically to inform and entertain the public and perhaps also to plug the book that he's now published collecting up material from his website. But then again, some personal pages are complete hogwash. The author of MalePregnancy.com has gone to a lot of trouble to make this nonsense look convincing. And he includes links to a non-existent hospital. He's got a video of the baby's ultrasound image there. On many spoof sites, the authors fess up someplace. But this one never does, and poor Mr. Lee has been pregnant now for at least five years to my personal knowledge. There are plenty of these types of sites around, so why is this stuff free? Well, we can try to guess. Is it just for kicks? Are they showing off? Who knows? The author doesn't actually say. Turning to .edu sites, that refers to educational institutions, and they put up a lot of good information because the educational mission is all about sharing information. You may even find some full-text scholarly research articles posted on university websites if the authors actually own the copyright to their own work, such as this one. We have the full text of a journal article here. But watch out, because you'll often find 
papers written by other undergraduate or even high school students posted on .edu sites, and those of course would not be appropriate sources for you to refer to in your own work. So that's an overview of some of the things to watch for and think about as we evaluate websites. Try to determine the purpose of the information. Is it intended to inform us, to persuade us of something, to sell us something, to entertain us, maybe even to dupe us? Or is it perhaps just blowing off hot air? Be sure to look for an About Us or similar link to see what you can find out about the author's qualifications and the mission of the organization that supports the web page so that you're aware of any likely biases in the presentation. And if the information passes muster on those aspects, then you're ready to go on to the next step. And there's a couple more videos that will go through step-by-step step evaluating some websites.